Jason, thanks for your time. Not the first time we've reported this, but do you see this as a gradual ratcheting up of numbers and military, I suppose, show of force from China? Do you think this is escalating at the moment? Yes, thanks for having me, Tom, and thanks for always mentioning my Navy Reserve affiliation. As a reminder, as I'm not on duty, these views are my own. Yes, this is classic what we're talking about, the gray zone, defined as actions that China will take that fall just below the threshold of actions that would require a stronger military response from Taiwan or the U.S. or allies. And if, one of the uh, tools in the toolkit I often use, as I mentioned, to think about another country's perspective is to picture, what if I was advising President Xi on this? I would say, let's have a menu, let's have an a la carte menu of gray zone tactics that every time something happens that we don't like, like the US and Australia and the UK enter a submarine deal, or you know, the, not coincidentally, it is October 1st when this happened was the 72nd anniversary of the Communist Party. It's their national day. So let's pull off that a la carte menu, some things that are just slowly heading even closer to that threshold. And this is another example. With 38 uh, jets, I think it's by 10, the most number of jets that have entered Taiwan's air defense ident identification zone. So it is certainly a ratcheting up. What China will try to do at this point is to make something like that feel relatively normal. Mm -hmm. And the last point I'll make on that is that it's somewhat of a counterpoint to what the US and allies do in what we call freedom of navigation operations, where we travel through uh, international, what we consider international waters um, that China considers their waters, and we routinely try to just show what these are so it's representative in that way as well. Right, so that's the grey zone from the point of view of China. What about from the point of view of US and its allies? What should it seek to make, if you like, the red zone or when you're going beyond the grey zone? Keeping yeah, in mind... Point. Whatever you're defining here, you need to be willing to call it out. This can't be a bluff. So what would they consider? What action would go beyond that? And what could they do in, in response to it? Yes. So let's look back at the last two presidential administrations. When I was in the White House um, working for President Obama, we learned that diplomatic overtures and agreements uh, fell flat, that China ultimately didn't respect those. And the President Trump's administration, uh, the, the way that the China, that uh, uh, trade deals and sanctions were being used against China showed that China did respond in some way to those more forceful uh, measures. But neither has entirely worked. So what they're trying to do, uh, the Biden administration, is really to get as many countries to follow it to isolate China. And this is what the Quad is about. This is what the AUKUS is about. And the entire U.S. approach now is to use tactics that we already use that fall short of military conflict. So it's not to uh, you know, launch an attack on Beijing, but it is to try to get as many allies as it can to call out China on its bad behavior. That would be the number one goal um, for the Asia Pacific strategy um, for the Biden administration. And you're starting to see examples of that over and over again. Um, so that um, still somewhat in the gray zone, but the more that China, uh, the more that uh, the US can get its allies on board with it right. to counter China, um, the, the more successful it believes it will be. So, OK, that's interesting. So China feels like it gets a win, it thumbs its nose at the US, but the US plays the long game and tries to get people on side through each Chinese action. I get, so what about a military sense, though, short of actual sort of invasion and what might spill into a conflict zone? Is there something the US and its allies should not tolerate in terms of um, China doing? Is it 100 planes? Is it something different? Uh, in terms of yes, what, what what's interesting to here is the air defense identification zone is actually technically international airspace. So China recognized that it's flying right up against the line to what Taiwan would consider international airspace. I mean, it's only 130 kilometers, remember, from mainland China to Taiwan at its narrowest point. So China could theoretically continue to raise that number. All it is is violating Taiwan's domestic law for not reporting its aircraft in accordance with its uh, air defense identification zone policies. However, if it crossed that line, that should uh, that should uh, uh, ignite the response from the U.S. and allies saying that this is now a step too far. And the next thing they would do is bolster defenses or uh, increase mm. the number of U.S. Uh, military rotations in the region or perhaps even on Taiwan soil to state that is a step too far and try to push back right. the gray zone a bit. I could ask any number of follow-up questions because it's a, fa a top fascinating topic. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We might pick it up next time. Jason Israel, thanks for your time. Thanks so much, Tom.